with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. Humankind, taken in totality, uses but a very little portion of the possibilities available to it. Consider, for example, the vast power of the sun. Scientists compute that enough solar energy from outer space falls onto the United States of America alone every 20 minutes of the day to power all of the machines, the home appliances, city lighting systems, everything in this entire country for one whole year. And yet we are hardly using this solar energy at all, except for such specialized applications as sun-powered radio transmitters and satellites orbiting the Earth and a relatively few home solar systems. In precisely the same way that humankind uses very little of the physical energy available to it, humankind also uses but a mere infinitesimal fraction of the spiritual potential which it possesses because the divine spirit of God himself indwells your mortal mind, is within each one of us to strengthen and inspire if only you will dare to draw upon it. The most interesting, the most exciting realm in all of human life is this interior realm. Although the external world is, of course, fascinating in its diversity. For example, every year scientists, entomologists, discover some 9,000 new kinds of insects on this earth. That's how many new sorts they find on this planet on an average every 12 months. But as interesting and diverse as the external world of nature may be, the most exciting realm is this internal region of the mind, your consciousness, your volition, aspiration, and your spiritual potential. Declare the master of masters, the kingdom of God is within you. You are a son or daughter of the living God. You are infinitely loved by the very creator of this entire universe. A spark of spirit, the literal presence of the living God indwells your mortal mind. You are possessed of a cosmic compass capable of orienting your life to the infinite and the eternal. If you will choose above all things to do the will of God, to turn your will and your life over to God in your personal human experience, this is a delightful and exhilarating way to live. It's the way you've always really inside yourself wanted to live. I remember I ran across a cartoon which showed a housewife shaking her sleepy, bleary-eyed husband by the shoulder one morning, attempting to rouse him, and she's saying, it's another day, care to give it a try? And some people, very frankly, would rather not. Multiplied millions of human beings on this earth, populating the perimeter of this planet, would really just rather not get up when the morning alarm clock goes off, or somebody begins shaking them, by the shoulder and telling them it's time to stumble out of bed. They have nothing really to look forward to but another day of inward emptiness, of no real ultimate purpose in life, just mere existence, only enduring the next 16 hours until it's time to go back to bed and sleep for another eight. And yet, the master of masters, the greatest spiritual teacher in the history of this planet, declared that the God of all this universe loves you as a father loves a child, and God has a wonderful will for your life, an ongoing objective which can make your personal existence an adventure from here to eternity, literally, and you can find it if you will seek it. Seek and you will find, he said. Knock and the door will be opened. Ask and you will receive. If you will seek these things above everything else, the plans and purposes of God for your life all of life becomes infused with a new sense of direction and purpose and meaning. Recently, studies at the University of California have indicated that happiness, how happy you feel day by day, is definitely a phenomenon of your inner life. The Institute for Human Development has done an intensive study of which philosophies of life create the greatest degree of human happiness in those who hold to those philosophies or believe in them. Those who believe that happiness depends upon externals view life as unpredictable and determined by others or by sheer luck, while people who are oriented to an internal sense of purpose have a feeling of control over their relationships with the world. The persons who realize that happiness is an internal state of being, according to this university study, believe that they are masters of their fates. 
they're able to take more direct action and achieve greater self-fulfillment. Such people were found to be more in touch with their own past, present, and future, were better able to anticipate and prepare for events, and were able to encounter change with less fear, dread, and anxiety. People who thought happiness was simply a result of external circumstances were found to be less able to cope with problems well. This is in a university psychological study. And they were more given to self-doubt and dependence on others. One of the most important discoveries you can make in your life is that you can control your own life and your destiny to a remarkable extent, that regardless of external circumstances, your inner life can be rich and rewarding, abounding in love, peace, and purpose, and with a certainty of cosmic meaning in your human existence. To find the will of God for you is to find for yourself all of this and to begin to live with a new invigorated vitality as the son or daughter of the living God whom you were born to be, created to be, and as you really long to live. It can begin right here and now if you will have the faith to have it so. According to your faith, said the Master, so shall it be to you. Wherever you are right now, whatever your attitude might be, your feeling toward life, as you're listening to this radio broadcast, you got where you are and as you are largely as the result of a series of your own decisions. To be sure, circumstances did play a part in it all, but even more important were the ways in which you decided to respond to the circumstances of life. And from this very moment on, if you will choose to, you can begin to act and react to life differently, to respond on a higher level, in a better way. You can begin to seek and find and do the very will of God for you. The choice is yours for the making. I have talked with college and university students who have said they felt their studies were meaningless. But in deeper conversation, it became clear, in fact, they felt that life itself was meaningless. I've conversed with workers who declared their work to be meaningless, but who in time went on to express that they felt that all of life itself was really meaningless. How can you ever expect to find your work or your education meaningful if you find your very existence in and of itself fundamentally meaningless? Said Socrates, the ancient Greek philosopher, the unexamined life is not worth living. Consider yourself, who you are, where you are, where are you going? If you feel disorganized, fragmented in your purposes and motivations and ideals, bear this truth in mind. The very God who organized this very universe can organize your life. The very God whose infinite intellect and wisdom governs nebula and galaxies and all of starry outer space, this very God can govern the way you live your life day by day, year by year. The will of God can utterly transform you from the inside out if you will seek for the will of God with all your heart and if you will learn to love God with all your heart. Jesus said the first great commandment is you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And he said the second is like to it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. These are spiritual principles, but you cannot be really happy in the living of your life without living by spiritual truths and principles because there is more to you than meets the eye, more than your physical body. There's more to you than meets your own eye when you stand in front of a full-length mirror and peruse your personage and contemplate your corporeality. There's more to you than a physical body. A psychologist once defined a child as a package of potentials. But that definition is not only true of children, but of men and women as well. You have unplumbed depths. You are, in truth, a package of spiritual potentials, and faith can transform your outlook. You can begin to see things differently, and you'll begin to live differently. Behavior expresses attitude, and attitude comes first. And faith is the attitude of trusting God, of giving your life to the very God who gave you your life in the first place. And God has guidance 
and direction for the living of your life. When a magnetic compass is brought near to a running motor or a power transformer or any source of magnetism, the needle of that compass will be deflected. It points toward the magnetic source. And in precisely the same way, there is within your mind a sort of cosmic compass, a spiritual indicator which will point to any spiritual truth wherever you may chance to discover it and by which you can begin to recognize spiritual realities if you will seek them. If you will seek them. That is your choice. If you will choose God, if you will desire to find God, a person who wants to find God is no more interested in discussing fine points of theology, sociology, and psychology than a person who's starving to death wants to hear a lecture by some professor on the art of gourmet cooking. No, the person who is hungry doesn't want a lecture on gourmet cooking. That person wants food. And the man or woman who wants God wants God. No substitute will do. No theorizing or ritualizing or intellectualizing can take the place of the experience of God. Yet the astonishing thing is that experience of God is so simple to achieve. It is so simple that multiplied millions of men and women have denied themselves the superb satisfactions of that experience of knowing God simply because they could not believe anything so magnificent could be that very simple to find. The great author A. Conan Doyle, who wrote the Sherlock Holmes mystery series, believed the best place to hide something was where everybody could see it because they would never think to look for something hidden there. So the finding of God is so simple, a process, that it hardly deserves to be called a process at all. It is so available that many assume it to be inaccessible or unavailable. Yet it's true, the finding of God is so simple that for many it seems to be difficult. If I were to come on this radio broadcast and announce the secret to finding God is to stick your index fingers in your ears, cross your eyes, hold your breath, and recite the alphabet backward, if I announced that that were the sure and certain way to find God as a personal experience, if I proclaimed that with sufficient enthusiastic conviction, some people would be pulling off the freeways to try it. In fact, no such contortions are necessary to the finding of God. Just simple faith. Jesus said, have faith in God. It is written, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That is simple. It is simply the faith to believe that you are infinitely loved by the infinite God. Period. Dare to believe you are infinitely loved by the infinite God. Trust that love and trust God. Trust your life to God. Believe in the nearness of God. And the more you believe it and more than believe it, have faith in it and give your life to that, You'll apprehend the love of God by faith and appropriate it and claim it and take it for your own and begin to live as the son or daughter of the living God. You really are. In that is life. In that is joy. In that is life everlasting. For free literature on the spiritual life, material which I have written on these very topics. If you feel that divine discontent, that inward spiritual restlessness, yearning for a finding and knowing of God, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written some free literature on finding God, getting to know God, growing spiritually, seven principles of prayer, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the spiritual truth which rings down through the corridors of human history that this entire world was intended and created to live as one family of love, the family of God, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, and you are an infinitely valuable son or daughter of this living God in this great far-flung universal family of God. If you're intrigued by this truth, if that rings some sort of celestial bell inside your soul when I speak it into this radio microphone, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.